Hey everyone, I'm Gwen from Nile. Nile is a serverless Postgres for building modern SaaS. Now, as you know, SaaS applications are multi-tenant and Nile provides tenancy virtualization. The tenancy virtualization is the ability to create and access tenant databases anywhere in the world. But it's as simple as using a single database. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I built a simple SaaS application, a to-do list manager with Nile and with Java, be specific Spring Boot. And I will show you how tenant virtualization in Nile made building an application both simpler and more secure. In order to show you all that, I'm going to start by going over the setup. So we'll create a database, we'll create a table, and then we will clone the code for the example application. I will show you how to configure this application, how to run it, what it does, and then we'll switch over to the code editor and I'll go with you step by step on how I implemented this application and what parts did I use Nile and how I used Nile to simplify the implementation. So let's do it. <laughs> now, first things first, I want to sign into Nile and create a new database. So we're going to use the default name and because Nile is serverless Postgres, it's it took me just a minute to create this new database. Now, take a look at how this database already has a tenant table. This is what we call a, call a built-in table. Because tenants are such an important concept in SAS and in Nile, we are providing a table with some columns that you're going to need. So we have a tenants table and it has a column for name because we figured your tenants will have a name. And of course you can extend it with your own columns. There's also additional built-in tables for things like users and you can read all about it in our documentation. Now, built-in tables are great, but in order to build my application, I'm going to need my own table. So let me create a table for storing my to-do list for all my tenants. So do you see over here that I have a tenant ID column in the table? This means that naturally that each row you can, once it has data, you can see that it belongs to a specific tenant. And those kind of tables that have tenant ID column where the data belongs to specific tenants, we call them tenant aware tables. And a lot of tenant virtualization is built on top of those tenant aware tables. The opposite, if you create a table that doesn't have this column, we call it a shared table. So you can kind of guess what each one of those mean. Okay, we're done setting up the database. One last step while we're still here in the console is to go and grab the database credentials. Um, you and I are going to need them when we go and set up our application. Next, we're going to switch to our command line. And let's start by cloning the repository. So, And now we'll go into the directory with this specific example. And we'll copy the configuration file. We have an example configuration file in there. Let's copy it. And now we can go and edit the configuration file. And basically, we'll put in the details of our database as we copied them earlier. You did save them, right? If not, you'll need to go back and grab them now. Our database is beautiful flower and then the credentials, both username and password, we are using UIDs for those. Okay, so we save those. And now let's build. Okay, and you can see the build was successful here. So we can run the application. Okay, 
and the application started. Now, this is a backend application, so I'm going to use curl to interact with it. And you can basically the way it all works is that I'm using curl calling my application, and then my application is interacting with Nile to do what I asked it to do. So I call this command to create a tenant, and yeah, here it is creating a tenant. And then I can create a to-do for this tenant. So I have this route for tenants, this route for to-dos. If I want to list the to-do, I have a route for that. So I do a get on this endpoint. And now let me create another tenant with another to-do task. And now you can see that when I list the tasks for the second tenant, I only get tasks <laughs> for that tenant. I don't get anything else. Now, you may be wondering, Gwen, what's the big deal? We all built hundreds of applications like that. Although if you never had, congratulations, you're about to do something pretty cool and pretty useful. But those of us who have some experience, we've built a lot of web applications and it looks like a normal one. So what is the big deal? Well, let me move to, from the terminal to my text editor and I will show you basically step by step how I build this application and all the interesting parts and all the parts that use Nile to do things that otherwise may be a lot harder for you to do. So first of all, this is Spring application and I'm using the Spring framework. If you are not familiar with Spring, specifically with Spring Boot, which is what I'm doing here, it is an inversion of control or injection based web framework. So the idea is that it has its own workflows and I am creating configurations or creating my own objects, extending things, customizing, and all those annotations tell Spring how to tie my customization into the correct places in the existing framework. So, over here, you can see that I'm set, when I'm setting up the application, I am setting up two very important, very high level configuration points. The first is that I'm using my own custom data source, which I'm calling tenant aware data source. And you'll see why and what it does in a second. So you can see here that I'm also setting up an interceptor and this interceptor runs before all the handlers. And you can see that I'm putting the interceptor on the tenant pass. So it runs before every route that starts with slash tenant and has a tenant ID in it. And if I switch now over to the interceptor code, you can see that it basically, <laughs> you can see here, it picks up all the pass parameters. Then out of those pass parameters, it picks up the tenant ID and it stores it in a thread local context. This thread local context is very important because it means that once the handler runs, which is immediately when I'm returning from this method, it will be on the same thread and therefore is guaranteed to have the tenant ID that I just set. This is extremely important. If any other request comes in at the same time, they will get their own thread. This is how Spring and in general Jakarta and ja the J this specific Java web framework works. And because it's on a different thread, it will get its own thread local context. And therefore we are not go the two requests are not going to interfere with each other, which is very important. So I'm storing things in a way that is thread local. And I am, now that I finished, I can move on over to the handler. So the next thing that runs is the handler. In this case, the to do controller. And you can see that I have almost no code here. <laughs> the only thing it does is call the to do repository and says find all, which is basically select star, bring me all the to do's, which is a bit weird, right? Don't I need a work clause? <laughs> no, I don't need a work clause. This is exactly the cool part. Even though it does not have a work clause, it is not going to get me all the tasks. Why? Well, when I'm calling tenant repository, this is a JPA interface, which then talks to the database. 
How does it talk to the database? Well, it needs a data source and it needs to get connection, which is where my custom data source that I created earlier comes in. So let me switch over to the tenant aware data source. And as you can see, it is an extension of the Hikari data source, which is, I think, probably the most popular one in Java world. And you can see that basically the first thing we do is if you need connection from my data source, I call Hikari and say, hey, can you get me a connection? But now that I have this connection, before I am returning it to my caller, so the handler can actually run the query, I'm doing one important thing. I'm picking up the tenant ID from this thread local context, and I'm telling Nile through this new connection, please set the Nile tenant context to this ID that I'm, I'm giving you. What does it do that I'm telling Nile, hey, please set your context to this tenant? This is tenant virtualization in action. It basically tells Nile, this connection is not to any <laughs> random database. It's not to the big database in general. I am connecting to the virtual database that belongs to this specific tenant. This is the connection I need. And now that I'm connected to database, to this specific virtual database for this specific tenant, any queries that I run on this connection, be it selects, updates, deletes, everything is limited to the data for this specific tenant and the share tables, but we're not talking about them yet. So we are now working in this more limited environment for this specific tenant. And it means that when the query runs, I'm magically only getting the results I need because I'm already in the database. So it gives me safety. It also gives me much simpler code with, I don't, I mean, this is a simple query, but as queries get complicated, figuring out where to put the where conditions, how to do the correct joins, it can get a bit complicated. We are taking all this complexity away from you and we give you safety. You're not going to accidentally leak data between tenants. This is pretty important if you're building SaaS, make and break for the business. Uh, so if you have a lot of controllers, if you have more complicated code, this becomes more and more valuable. Now, one good way to see the impact is to look at what I named insecure route. So if I go to the insecure route, the controllers there, you can see that it's the exact same code. <laughs> I'm also taking the to-do repository and I'm doing find all. How is it different? Why is this actually giving us all the to-dos and not just for one tenant? Well, you can see that the route here is not tenant slash tenant ID slash route. And therefore my interceptor is intentionally <laughs> not covering this route. And as a result, it gets everything because I'm not, I don't have the tenant ID and as a result, I'm not setting the context. And as a result, I am connecting, not connecting into this private virtual database, but into the wider <laughs> database for my entire application. So this is an important point. Don't do it in production. The insecure routes <laughs> exist in order to make a point for this demo. Okay, enough tutorial for today. We learned a lot. We learned about Nile's built-in tables. We learned about Nile's tenant aware tables. We learned how Nile uses session context to provide those tenant virtualization and why this is important. And we learned how to use all those things when we're building a simple yet secure SaaS application with Nile and with the Spring Boot framework. So I hope you followed along with the example on GitHub. But if you haven't, I am going to encourage you to try it right now. And if you have any questions, if you want to discuss, if you want to argue, all those things, we are on our community Discord. I'm there almost 24-7. My co-founder Ram is there really 24-7. Uh, you can also go on GitHub, start a discussion. Thank you so much to, for listening to me. And I hope you're going to build a very successful SaaS on Nile.